Hello, and welcome to another Red Hat Consulting whiteboard video. I'm Ian Tewksbury, Senior Architect with Red Hat Consulting. And I'm Kevin Franklin, Architect with Red Hat Consulting, and we're here today to talk to you about DevSecOps. Now, Kevin, I know what DevOps is, combining people, process, and technology together to solve problems, but what is DevSecOps? So, DevSecOps and DevOps are actually the same thing. They're both methodologies dedicated to observing your organization and making small changes to help break down the barriers and silos within your organization and help realize operational efficiencies. And what we're doing by specifically calling out the second DevSecOps for security is we're trying to remind you to involve security in the conversation from the very beginning and throughout the entire life cycle of your projects. But why would we need that reminder to include security in the conversation? It's not like anyone has ever forgotten to include security in their conversation before. No, certainly not at all. I imagine none of us can think of that. But can you walk us through a hypothetical situation in case someone did do that? What would happen? Well, let's, let's do that. We have a developer here, Anne, and she has a bright idea for a new feature of the application that's really going to help some of their business users. So she's going to write some Java code to implement that feature. Where is she going to get those thousands of dependencies she needs to build her application? Well, we're going to pull from everyone's favorite place, the internet. Okay. I don't foresee any issues happening from that. All right, so now that we've got our application built, where are we going to put it? Well, because we're an agile organization using DevOps, and we have a uh, Kubernetes-based container platform ready to use, in this case OpenShift, we're going to build a container image that contains that application. OK, but let's assume that Anne isn't also an expert in container development. Where is she going to get that base image she needs? Let me guess. Is she going to pull from the internet? Exactly. OK, so now that we've got our built image, uh, you mentioned that we have uh, OpenShift for our container platform. Where did that thing come from? Well, we, because we had developers and operations speaking to each other, developers helped draft some requirements for operations to set up an OpenShift cluster that we're going to deploy our container image on. OK. So Dev and Ops worked together to build our platform. Now we've got her idea all the way onto our, our platform. Uh, we get to celebrate? Yeah, about that. Well, you know. Our nameless security guy just got caught wind of this and is like, we might have some things to talk about. Oh yeah, I know this step of the process. This is the one where they come in and say, hey, Kevin, no, you can't just pull those dependencies down from the internet. So now, Kevin, now that your, your internet dependency system's down, um, how does your rest of your system work? I mean, at that point, the container image that I was pulling from the internet, that's gone, and I can't build my application's container image. I now have nothing to deploy. Oh, wait, didn't you mention that we can't pull the dependencies either from the internet? Yeah, no. Well, I guess we can't build the application. OK, well, at least we have our trusted container platform. About that. So Bob wasn't involved in the setup of that at all, and he didn't go through the security requirements or any of that information. So even though we have an enterprise-ready secure solution, there's no documentation for the security team to review. So they're just like, nope. You're not allowed to run that in production. Game okay. over. OK, OK, Kevin. At least we have Anne's code. About that. So Anne is a great developer, but she left some debug statements in that were logging out everybody's SSN to standard out. So um, not so good. Yeah, I mean, that can happen to the best of us. Uh, well, at least we still have her idea. But how can we do this better and so that we can actually get it to production and, and we're all happy? Well, probably the biggest thing that you can do from the start with using DevSecOps is you get a conversation started between the teams. So security is going to talk to development, security is going to talk to operations, and of course ops and dev are going to talk to each other. And it's going to be an open forum in which they can just discuss the requirements and security guidance is needed. And we can actually inject security here to help improve the application early through developer education about you know what techniques they should use, what hashing algorithms, what are the security requirements for the organization. So security can be involved in that development process right from the very beginning. Exactly. All right, so now that the development has the security requirements to build the application the way they need them to, how can we make sure that code that's being developed is actually following those requirements? Or, and you know, PII isn't accidentally being logged to standard out. Well, what we can do is we can use static code analysis tools to scan that code and make sure we're not doing silly things like logging out PII information. OK, so now that we have trusted code, where are we going to get those dependencies that we need? Well, you know, security isn't the biggest fan of just wantonly pulling various uh, dependencies from the internet. So what we're going to do is when we pull them down, it was, we're going to scan them. OK, and I understand scanning 
the requirements today, but what about tomorrow? Something we scan today and trust today, we don't necessarily trust tomorrow. How are we gonna help with that? Well, so we're going to set up a dependency registry. And on that registry, we're going to have, you know, automated jobs that are going to scan these dependencies regularly, update them as needed, and ensure that, you know, those dependencies themselves are secure. Okay, so now we've got our application, but we want to build our container. Let me take a guess at what we're going to do. We're going to pull down container images from the internet, scan them if we pull them down, put them in a trusted registry, scan that continually so that we know we trust things that we trust today, we trust tomorrow, and then use that to build our container image. But exactly. Since we trust our code and we trust our dependencies, Kevin, does that mean we automatically trust our application too? Well, this is a case where the whole is in fact greater than the sum of the parts. Even though we're scanning everything going into the application, there might be certain security issues that are only exposed once the application is built. So it will behoove us to actually scan that resulting application artifact. So then following that same logic, we should probably scan our built container image as well, because combining our application with the base container image might reveal a vulnerability that wasn't otherwise there. Exactly. All right. Now, what about our container platform? Well, because, you know, using DevSecOps, we've had an open, honest conversation here between security and operations and everybody involved. You know, Dev is helping make the requirements for the platform, but security is also informing uh, the various secure guidelines that are going to need to be followed. We're going to secure the OpenShift platform by using things like monitoring, scanning of um, scanning of the platform, those sort of things, and standard uh, Linux hardening practices. So not only will we make sure the container platform is built from the very beginning, following whatever procedure security needs, we'll make sure it's continually kept up to date. Exactly. So now we have a place to deploy our application. And now we've got three people. That sounds like a much better party. I think so too. So if someone wanted help getting started, bridging these gaps between their teams, building out a process, or even implementing the technology, what could they do? Well, they could reach out to their existing Red Hat account executive or go to redhat.com forward slash services to help get that conversation started. Mm -hmm.